Everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we're looking at Marvel's October 2021 solicitations. And a couple things to keep in mind here. Number one, this is the first month that uh, Marvel Comics is officially switched over. They're working with Penguin Random House. So this is their best foot forward month of comics. And uh, so you'll see some number ones. You'll see some big kind of kickoffs. You'll see a ton of variants spiking kind of the numbers and other things. out. So that, that's what you're going to see. The other thing to keep in mind is I'm pretty hammered. I'm just I'm recording this pretty late. It's uh, about 3 a.m. and uh, we're you know I, I'm I'm gonna give you this little bit of advice. I, maybe this falls into kind of dad perch territory, but uh, tequila. So a lot of people make this mistake with tequila. There's two types of tequila. There's uh, shooting tequila, and there's sipping tequila. And generally speaking. Uh, shooting tequila is tequila that costs less than a hundred dollars a bottle. Now there's some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, if you're if you're um, if you're paying less than a hundred dollars a bottle, you're drinking shooting tequila, and that's where you you know you shoot it. And sipping tequila is where you're paying quite a bit of money. It's like very expensive mezcal and, and other you know, smoked tequila and everything else. That's that's a different thing. A lot of people sit there and they like get a shot of tequila and they sip it like an idiot. And you don't do that. Like if you're uh, if you're drinking um, Patron, I made a lot of jokes and about trying to get Patron as a sponsor. I'm, I'm joking, but uh, that that's not that Patron is shooting tequila. Don't don't, don't sip Patron. Yeah, yeah, I know you got Patron Gold, but it's still shooting tequila. Just don't uh, don't sip cheap tequila. That's all I'm saying. And then like flavored tequila, like pineapple tequila, that's like flavoring gasoline. What are you What are you even doing there? That's a that's a terrible plan. Like tequila is like salt and lime. That's your flavoring. That's all you got. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into a Marvel Comics in October. Somehow that little. Um, that little you know PSA on tequila seems to fit what we're going to get into here. So let let's see what we got. What's this recommended videos for you? What's this? Uh, now this looks stupid. Okay, so let's see here. We got Venom number one. Okay, Venom number one here. Al Ewing, Ram V, Brian Hitch, art and cover. This obviously is not Brian Hitch. This is some kind of variant cover. Let's see if this uh, does any better. Oh, there we go. This is the Venom we're going to get. Uh, chains and venom. So uh, I got lots of variant covers. Um, this is uh, you know the new era of venom. Al Ewing, Ram V, and uh, what are we promising? Horror maestro, mind bending, gut wrenching tale of symbiotes, the likes of Marvel has never seen. I'm uh, sure. Okay, it is Brian Hitch back on a comic for I mean three issues. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think Brian Hitch is going to be on this for like two, three issues? I don't know. It's, it's six dollars. That's all I know. Fifty-six pages, six dollars. I guarantee you, it's not fifty-six pages of Brian Hitch artwork, though. I, I mean, I'm just spoiler alert. He will not be doing fifty-six pages. Okay. Amazing Spider-Man number seventy-five. This is the new team of uh, well, Zeb Wells is starting. Pat Gleason on art. That that's not beyond board. Okay, Beyond Board means these are the other artists you're going to be inflicted upon. And we got Kelly Thompson, uh, Saladin Ahmed, Cody Ziegler, Pat Gleason, Zeb Wells. All right. And uh, this is the Ben Riley has taken over for Spider-Man. And we got a bunch of different pictures. Oh, Hobgoblin there. Okay, so a bunch of different Spider-Man. That's nice. Pat Gleason. Pat Gleason is mining the hell out of this... Uh, this this Spider-Man uh, web kind of view, like he 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 had that one, and this Art Adams always good to see Art Adams. That's always good. Anyway, um, in the Spider-Man seventy-six, this is the tease that uh, Mary Jane is sitting by. Uh, you know, Peter Parker is all effed up. So anyway, the unthinkable has happened. Okay, they're teasing really hard that uh, Peter Parker is going to die. I, I I don't think he's going to die, but uh, you know maybe a coma. Maybe a, I mean, I mean, who knows? He's he's died before. I mean, shit. Why not? Amazing Spider-Man seventy-seven. Okay, here we go. Here's this. Sure. Uh, what do we? The Beyond Corporation returned. Okay. Um, Immortal Hulk number fifty. This is the final issue. Now this got delayed. This is Al Ewing, uh, Joe Bennett wrapping up their uh, their you know their their run on Immortal Hulk. 
And uh, this is probably the cover they want you to think about here, the Alex Ross cover. This is the fun little, um, this is jo Joe Gisco. I don't know. Anyway, maybe this is an homage cover by Joe Bennett. I, I'm, I'm not sure actually what we've got here. I should know. But anyway, this is a big finale. Dark Ages, two of six. Here we have, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. Who do I want to piss off today? X-23, Wolverine, Laura, Clone Girl, uh, Stabby Fingers. I, anyway, so here we have Dark Ages. Okay. It's nice the apocalypse here. In, in theory, maybe he's a villain. I'm sure. Um, what is So Dark Ages, Tom Taylor doing a Marvel book. It has been years since the age of technology ended in a single moment, like a switch had been flicked off for an entire planet. Now Earth's heroes attempt to create you know, bring humanity together in darkness. Uh, all right, sure. Why not? Oh, Apocalypse. He's the big villain. Sure, why not? Death of Doctor Strange Avengers. This is also called, like, um, Death of Doctor Strange. We got more interest in this little five-part series than we thought. So we created some tie-ins. And this one is the Avengers. Now, what I like about this is this, this is Steve Skorosh, uh doing the cover to this. And uh, I will support anything Steve does because I think he's uh, pretty nifty. But uh, the Juggernaut's going to fight the Avengers for some reason in a Doctor Strange um, miniseries. Why not? Why Why? Why the F not? Strange Academy. Okay. Hubito Romeros is doing the art. I haven't looked at this ahead of time, by the way. So I'm making guesses like I'm showing you. What do we have for Ramos? Um, he's got a cover, but Mike Del Mundo doing the art. Okay. Mike Del Mundo is a decent artist. Like, I, I don't know why you'd be hiding Del Mundo's art under Ramos, but anyway. The, the Enchantress is going to face the battle of her weird square chin in this issue. Um, Death of Doctor Strange number two. Here, uh, Baron Mordu is uh, sitting down with some crazy knives. Uh, sure. Uh, Inferno, number two of four. This is the Jonathan Hickman written X-Men event for the fall that uh, is, in theory, supposed to invigorate things. Emma Frost here is carrying two helmets. I'm sure that will be great. Uh, what do we have? Secrets. Uh, th these. So let's see, by the way. I haven't read it yet. I'll read it to you. Let's see if this solicitation makes any effing sense whatsoever. Secrets lies. They have a way of coming out and biting you when you least expect them. The secrets and lies of Krakoa will shake it to its foundation. Head of X, Jonathan Hickman, continues a tale of consequences with one of his first Marvel collaborators, artist Stefano Caselli. I mean, sure. Why not? Okay. There's, uh... Oh, she's got a bird arm. That, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> Emma Frost in this picture, by the way. She looks like, uh... uh she's been surprised. Like, whoa. I, I don't know. That, that, that face is a little weird. Anyway. Uh, Legends, Black Panther Legends 1 of 4. This is a limited series, and this is something new that Marvel is doing where they're trying to appeal to uh, kind of a younger audience here, which is a good idea. Um, it's maybe a weird idea that they're doing this in the direct market with 1 of 4, but this is one of those books kind of like Moon Girl that we've talked about before where the end result of whatever is happening here is the collected graphic novel. So what you're seeing right now is... Um, useless, let's just say. I mean, they're, they're, they're hoping for a few sales in the direct market, but really they don't care. This book is about selling a trade. That's, that's exactly what's going on here, which is fine, but I do kind of wonder why they bother with the floppies in the first place. But that, I mean, you know, whatever, you know, maybe some people buy it. New series, you know, T'Challa, sure. Darkhold, uh, the Darkhold Blade. So this is a tie-in to the Darkhold book in which the Scarlet Witch is a major player, even though the Scarlet Witch is dead in the X-Men, in the Trial of Magneto. Are you catching? Okay, sure. Are you following along? That sounds good. Daniel Kibblesmith is doing this one shot here. Uh, Kibblesmith said that uh, he didn't really know how to do Blade. And uh, I think, what was the deal? Like he wouldn't want to be a, like a white guy doing a comic about Blade. But I mean, in, in this isn't about... Um, the, the African-American black experience. This is a Blade the Vampire fighting mystical monsters and crap. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. This has nothing to do with race whatsoever. So I'm sure Kibble Smith is doing this. The Dark Cold Iron Man. 
Uh, this is Iron Man, and this one's supposed to have some body horror because that's a popular thing that people are doing. So Ryan North, the guy who brought you... Um, Jeff, what did Ryan North bring you? I think he brought you Power Pack. Is that right? I don't know. Anyway, Ryan North is uh, doing body horror with uh, uh, Iron Man. And Score Girl is in here somehow. No, no, sorry. The brilliant comedic mind behind Score Girl brings you body horror. Why? I mean, you know why not? Marvel Voices Community. We already talked about this. This is the Latino, Latina... Um, Marvel Voices comic celebrating those characters. Sure. This is kind of the magic, by the way, of Miles Morales uh, being able to play in kind of multiple fields. They need to, if Miles Morales just go, just if they make him gay, then he can be in every Marvel Voices comic in all the, I mean, period. It's just, he can be in all of them. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, it saves time. Luke Cage, City of Fire. I'm, I'm I'm tentatively excited about this. I like Luke Cage. I think street level Luke Cage is is a good idea. Uh, Ho Chi Anderson is actually a pretty decent writer. I like uh, what Anderson has done in other mediums. So I'm you know I'm 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 I'm, I'm optimistic about this. I want to see a good Luke Cage you know kicking ass. He's going up against the kingpin. That sounds good to me. Like uh, I'll, all right. Um, the only hitch is when we get to this uh, description and we lead literally. So first of all, we have a Miles Morales anniversary variant cover, which is like, why? It's Luke Cage. Why are we having a Miles? Like, what are you, what are you even doing? But then we, this first sentence, when a black man is murdered by a police officer in New York City, Luke Cage is called to action. Like, really? Like what? Why? Like it's it's Luke Cage against the Kingpin, and like like is this really? I, I I again I like Ho Chi Anderson. I like the kind of depth. I like the complexity. I like what he brings to the table. Um, this is is like ripped from the headlines. I mean, I you know the, here's the problem. Like Luke Cage, if if a police officer murdered a black man in New York City, Luke Cage could go and just rip the police officer's head off. Problem solved. Like, like we don't need three issues for that. So what is even like crooked cops? I mean, I, okay, Jesus, like, please do something cool with Luke Cage. Luke Cage is a badass character. Um, Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land, number two of five is where Kazar turns into like a plant guy or I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, Kang the Conqueror, three of five, we're, we're ha more than halfway now. Kang is fighting Doom again. Kang is an interesting character. They ought to get him away from Doom. Like, they're always, they have these two tied together too much lately, and I think Kang is, uh, arguably, he should forge his own path rather than always do the same thing. But anyway, that's fine. Blank, Black, Blank, Blank Panther. Yeah, Black Panther number three. Black Panther comes and is subservient to the X-Men and Storm. No, sorry, let's see what actually is happening. With assassins closing in, Wakanda's faith and shaken, T'Challa goes to visit Storm. On Mars, not a happy reunion. T'Challa has... I, maybe he's going to steal a knife. I mean, sure. Uh, Black Panther is another one where I think that character is really cool. I think you can do a mix of kind of a superhero slash spy. I always thought, to me, Black Panther, a, a really cool take on it would be like a James Bond kind of take on Black Panther where it was a uh, super spy action. He had some physicality to him and he could do pretty amazing things like that would be like, I want to see the uh, James Bond version of Black Panther. And instead they tend to go like Black, you know, Black Panther is trying to trying to lead his homeland, but people don't believe in him like that. It's it's turned into a trope like Tony is drinking and I and Captain America doesn't believe in America. And it's like, like, let's let's let T'Challa be awesome. Like, can we, can we have some comics where he just kicks some ass and is cool and does things right? Like this whole, like, he's walking up here on the red carpet and Storm's sitting on her throne. Like, with, the, with for whatever reason, they built a giant X throne, like a douchebag. And then Storm's looking down at him like, guy, oh, here's you, my ex-husband. I mean, I, whatever. Mar Miss Marvel, Marvel Tales. All right. She's got a fist and she's going to use it. Right in the pooper. No, I know. I'm just, she's... She's uh, she's saying, oh, this is Kelly Sue DeConnick and w and G Willow Wilson. Oh, this is a reprint. Okay, sure. Miss Marvel Beyond the Limit. Here she is beyond the limit. She's going to lift up 
an elephant that Loki is riding. That's a lot of things all at once. So why not? Dark Hawk. Dark Hawk sits in front of a, a gravestone and yells up into the air. Which is which is the, the classic way of mourning people. Amazing Fantasy number four or five. I maintain this is the book I'm probably looking forward to the most in the fall. This is Kari Andrews doing everything. And uh, we've got Teenage Spider-Man, Captain America, Spice Cold Black Widow. We've got Storm with a shield riding a freaking horse. I don't know where her legs have gone, but I'm, I'm up for it. This looks great. What, what variant covers do we have? Yeah. Okay, that's all right. That's this okay too, but I this this looks great. Like this this is the this is this is good regal commanding storm kicking ass. This up here is a uh, dumb storm. Like this this is storm who's sitting on a very uncomfortable. Like where where's her butt even going? Like there's no chair here. She's just kind of squatting. I mean it's good for the abs, but that's that's gonna be a terrible. This, this awesome storm. Okay. All right. Here's Deadpool. He's got a, ah, somebody shot him in the head with this pop gun. Okay. Um, Moon Knight, number four. Okay. McNiven doing this. Is this Tigra? Is that what we've got here? What are we doing with Moon Knight? A Night in the Life. Uh, yep. Tigra. Okay. Moon Knight's going to sleep with Tigra. Whenever Tigra shows up in a comic, she sleeps with whoever the hero is. Do you notice that? I mean, I'm not even joking. You, you look at like, it is like guest starring Tigra and Tigra is effing the whoever's in the comic. Every time. I'm just, I'm just saying. Anyway. Sounds good. Uh, Eternals Forever. We've talked about this. This is Ralph Macchio. Glad to see him back and doing an Eternals comic. Will it have anything related to do with the movie of the regular Eternals comic? Nobody knows, but that's okay. Here's Eternals Celestia, number one. Why not have two Eternals comics when you can just have one. He went Kieran Gillian doing this with uh, Zaizama, um, Asad Rivik doing the cover, not the interior. What's going on in this stuff? Uh, here's X-Men Legends number eight. So this is starting a brand new storyline. Who do we have? Larry Hama, Billy Tan. Okay. This is not a, this actually, the, the, oh, this must be a three part. They were doing two parts, but apparently this is Part number three, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, Omega Red, Wolverine, Larry Hama, Billy Tan. Yeah, sure, I'm up for that. Trial of Magneto, number three of four. This is where Magneto killed Scarlet Witch, or they, they claim, you know, the uh, the, uh, you know, the presumed innocent to guilty, whatever. Anyway, uh, but Scarlet Witch is alive and something else. So what's going on? The truth state won't stay buried, nor will other things. Who lurks? I, I don't know, but sure. A uh, sword. Guy with glasses has a bubble. This looks like Henry Grinch. I, it's, it's not Grinch, but I think Grinch is kind of funny. But it's not, I don't know, maybe it's not that either. Abigail Brand, Orcus. I think this is, this has got to be Henry, right? It's one of the few gingers left in, uh, in comics and movies. Anyway, he's trapped him in a bubble. Uh, Hellions. All right. We've got the classic... Uh, Scalp Hunter. Oh, sorry. Uh, John was Great Crow. Anyway, he's shooting something, and here's the other people. To remind you of who's else in the comic, it's right there. Um, the wheels have come off the Hellions bandwagon. I mean, they came off in the first issue. Sure. X Men number four. What do we got here? We got uh, a horse and somebody holding his head. What do we have? Though? It's Halloween, and the X Men have face horror born of the headless horseman. All right. Sure. Wait a minute. Hang on. Pepe LaRoz is off the book. So Gary Duggan is writing Javier Pina, who's not a, not a bad artist at all, but uh, Pepe LaRoz, three issues and out. Yeesh. Okay. All right. Sure. Uh, X-Force. Bearded Colossus holds his hand to his chest, as if to say, I, I have blood on my hand and there's no paper towels. No, what does he say? Uh, Mikhail, Doll Agents, Krakoa, Black Tom, New Mutants number 22, The Shadow King is uh, causing problems. Wolverine, 17. Are we still doing stuff with that? Uh, nope, it's Maverick. Maverick and Bannister and Krakoa. And 
Marauders, number 25. Emma Frost is uh, having a fight. Excalibur, 24. Um, Fancy Pants, Victorian, Psylocke is meeting aliens and spilling her wine everywhere. And these aliens are like, why, why, why did you not? You're, you're English, but you don't know basic table manners. That's, that's what's going on here. Uh, Spider Woman. She's hanging upside down. Notice, though, uh, ever since that incident where she was coming up over the rooftop and her butt was really exposed and everybody got all pissed off about it, now they put the hand, like, right in the middle. And this this basically shields it from being exploitive. It's a, it's a, it's a clever trick. Um, cool. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 31. Taskmaster. Uh, that does not look like a woman Taskmaster to me, but uh, sure. Date night. Okay, so it's a, it's date night for uh, Miles and whoever this is, and uh, Taskmaster, sure. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads, number four of five. This is Peter David, unless I missed my guess, and it looks like uh, Spider-Man's become one of the Eternals. Is that what's happening? Okay, Deviants, sure. I think Peter David and Greg Land are just they're just doing whatever the hell they want like the like this comic is bananas like they like it's a fun comic if you are not reading symbiote spider-man it has nothing to do with current continuity and it is just balls out nuts so that's fine marvel's number six kurt busiak uh lady lotus sure this is this has been a decent comic i mean it it doesn't it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things but it, it but it's fun you know, not all comics have to matter. It's 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 fine. Avengers forty nine. Boy, it's a penultimate issue to number fifty. Looks like they're fighting Namor. What's going on, Namor? The Winter Hulk has been sent to Atlantis with a dark mission. The the Winter. Are we doing the World War Hulk still? Oh, we are. This is still World War Hulk. World. Uh, God damn. Okay, World War She Hulk has gone to Atlantis. And uh, there's a problem. She won't look like this. She'll look more like, you know, this right here. What have you got? Okay. Uh, Phoenix Song, Echo, number one of five. So this is Echo, who is now Phoenix, doing Phoenix Song, which is a title that came out before. And here it's a five-part series about Phoenix. I got to say, at this point, I have to say that the... Um, you know, I've been telling you for months now that the Penguin Random House deal, which starts in October, is going to be a month where Marvel really puts their best foot forward. And um, this is Phoenix Song Echo, number one. So uh, there, there you go. Uh, Avengers Techie on Avengers. Uh, Jim Zub was very excited about this one, and uh, Bandai was getting behind it. Uh, Bandai was getting behind it with some cool stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, this could be some Mech Avengers. I, I have a feeling this could be pretty good. Iron Man number 13. What is this cover? It's Jusco. And I like Joe Jusco, but this is not his best. And uh, But what what's happening? Chris Cantwell. God damn it. He's still in the book? Jesus. Uh, Iron Man and Korvac. Warship. God, please end this storyline. Jesus. It just won't die. Captain Marvel and the other Marvels go up against the evil Marvels. Sure. Shang-Chi number five. Shang-Chi has uh, gotten into Tony's closet, put on his Iron Man armor, going crazy. Fantastic Four number 37. Fantastic Four is going trick-or-treating. Now, there's Johnny, Ben, Sue, and Reed. And so, yeah, all right. They're, they're okay. Terry Dodson doing a cover. That's always nice. Nico Leon doing the art. Less nice. But I, and Nico is, is nothing wrong with that. Anyway, the fallout from the 60th anniversary story continues. Spider-Man, guest star, Winter Guard, number three. Uh, Gamma Flight, number five, a five, sure. Black Widow, number 12. I seem to have lost all the images. I, I, that, that, that sucks. Um, All right, we're back. I just, uh, you know, reloaded the page, got something. I don't know why they did. It's like, it's like the page is like, you know what? We've had enough. And they just stopped putting in the uh, 
cover art. So that's fine. How far? Oh, God, we're like halfway. I've got to speed this up. Black Widow is facing a new villain um, in this issue uh, called uh, Mary. I don't know. Anyway, new villain. Champions, number 10. Danny Lore is somehow on this, still on this book. And they are fighting Roxon. Now they had a victory over Roxon. This comic, by the way, and I, I, this is a tough part, is I'm reading Champions. And uh, I know a lot of people are, you know, taking the piss out of this comic because of Danny Lore and Danny Lore's Twitter feed and everything else. But this is a terrible comic. Like, if you try and read this, it's, um, I mean, it appeals to, it appeals to someone, not me. So I guess I'll, I'll rephrase that. This is a terrible comic for me. Like, you try and read this, and it's like, oh my, it's like, it's like walking through a, just a, a swamp, a swamp filled with shards of glass that are going to just cut you the entire time. It's, it's, it's just maddening. Captain America number five of five. Um, this is where Captain America meets the military Captain America. It has a weird, really weird shield. But anyway, they're all going to team up somehow and Captain's Network band together. Last battle. Nefarious purposes and sure. Thor 18. Throg Thor. So Throg uh, returning. Uh, via Donny Cates in a one shot of uh, Frog Thor action. I, yeah, man, I like Joe Jusco, but what? Like they're they're not doing him any favors with some of these covers. Savage Avengers. Uh, it's cool and Gorov stuff. Yep, he sure is. So feels like the I, I like this comic. It's fine, uh, but it feels like the the whole like we're at issue twenty five, and uh, they're just like every issue. It's like can they overcome Cool and Gorov? Goth. I mean, I mean, eventually, I hope. Defenders number three of five. All right. Javier Rodriguez on this with Al Ewing, three issue series. The debut of the Deadly Mordron. Daredevil 35, Electra is still Daredevil, fighting Bullseye in this. Warhammer, Sisters of Battle. I, I you know, in theory, this are a bunch of uh, a female Brotherhood clan. That are fighting at the, the sisters of battle. Uh, is that true? Yeah, it's true. Aliens number eight. In this one, I think my guess is that aliens are going to come out of that little egg thing and infect people, and it's going to cause crazy problems every time. Um, yep, that that's what it seems to sum up. Star Wars: The High Republic. I mean, in this one, people are going to stand around and like pose. Meanwhile, the Empire is just going to. F everything up like they like they do. Um, Star Wars. I, wait a minute. There's two issues. No, this is Star Wars, Star Wars, the High Republic, one of five trial of shadows limited series. And here's the ongoing series. Number 10 in which um, I don't know. They, they wave around their swords. Uh, War of the Bounty, War of the Bounty Hunters, five of five brings Boba Fett into greater prominence here. Um, ties in some of the things they're doing with the prequels. Here's uh, IG-88 one-shot number one. A lot of Star Wars stuff going on, but not a lot of uh, not a lot of sales. Here is Star Wars number 18, which crosses over that as well, as well as Dr. Aphra, who's like, hey, here's some knives. I will tilt my body slightly to the left and dodge this assassin, which, uh, which indicates that this person is not good at their job. Um, here is... Uh, Here's Bounty Hunters number 17, and this is Valiant Balance, uh, Valiance Balance, wait a minute, Balance, and he is using his lightning hands to just take out stormtroopers. Sounds good. Here's Darth Vader, uh, who is uh, bringing the, light, the lightsaber way too close. Here's the thing I always wondered. Does the lightsaber give off heat? Because if it did, it would start to melt the whole mask. It would look really, really funky. Uh, I don't think it gives off heat, but then at other times it's like melting metal and things. So, I mean, I don't know the, the things you ask. Anyway, that's Marvel for October. In my opinion, not the not the most amazing October. They are printing far more comics in the four weeks they're putting stuff out. They've got a bunch of omnibus and hardcovers and other things. Knights of Pentragon will be fun, but um, yeah, a lot of things. I mean, they're basically going to average out. Uh, about 15 comics a week for the entire month of October. So they're putting out a lot, but I will say I have to eat some crow here uh, because everything I've heard and everything that I've been told 
was that Marvel was going to go really big in October. And generally speaking, I mean, that's not, I, I mean, not really. Uh, October looks pretty much like September. I don't think they've done too much, but, um, but you know, maybe, maybe, uh, I, I, I don't even know. There's a lot of variant covers here, but not the kind of big promotional items I expected. But what are you buying? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you're interested in, what you're definitely going to pick up. Like and subscribe, of course. And as always, thanks for listening. Remember, sipping tequila, very different from shooting tequila. Very, very different things. Thanks for